Study Session 3 Theoretical Categories Class Introduction Systemic Functional Grammar also called Hallidian Grammar will be introduced to you in this study session. It was propounded by Halliday, although many scholars have also contributed to its development. Halliday identifies four theoretical categories and four skills in the analysis of language. The categories are class, unit, system, and structure. While the skills are rank, delicacy, exponency, and depth, the learning outcome. When you have studied this session, you should be able to one, identify grammatical units and state their functions, two, construct correctly specific types of phrases, three, construct correctly specific types of clause, four, make correct sentence, five, analyze structure, and six, explain the concept of system. Class. This refers to the group to which members of a unit belongs. The group is based on their similarities and differences of structure. It is also based on their functions in the next largest unit. Besides, it is based on how they combine with other units of the same rank. Merely 1985-13. Units account for the stretches of language of varying length and composition which themselves carry grammatical pattern. Merely 1985. Members of a unit are classified based on their structural similarities and differences. How they function in the units above them, and how they combine with other units of the same rank. Five units are identified for English. They are muffin, word, group, plus, and sentence. Muffin. The muffin is the smallest meaningful unit of a language. There are two basic types of morphium. You have the free morphium and bound morphium. While a free morphium can stand on its own, a bound morphium cannot. This is why a free morphium qualifies as a word. It does not mean that a bound morphium is not meaningful. Let me now give you examples of each. In the example rule below, bound morphemes are underlined, bags, helped, disadvantage, a political, correction, wickedness, useful, melodious, taken, misinformation, a tip. A free muffin can stand on its own, remember. A bound muffin depends on the other muffin to be meaningful. You need to know that in some cases, it is not possible to separate the bound muffin from the free muffin. But it will be obvious that a bound muffin is present. Examples are presented in the box that follows. In the example below, Bound morphium are inseparable from free morphemes. Went, caught, thought, bent, and wrote. Another important point I must bring to your notice is that bound morphemes are affixes. In English, they are either prefix or suffix. 
also notice that some maximum may not be visible at all. These are called zero morphemes. It is the context of use that hints about their presence. Example, abound in the plural forms of nouns that are not different in spelling from the singular forms, such as ship and fish. Past forms that are not different from the present forms, such as court, split, cast, and broadcast. Note that you should be careful not to take a morphem to mean a syllable. While the syllable is a unit of phonology, the morphem is a unit of grammar. However, the two could be contaminous. Word. The word is the next unit above the morphem. It is a letter or a group of letters before and after which there are spaces. There are different perspectives from which a word can be classified. From the perspective of function, a word is either a content word or a grammatical word. Content words are those that belong to classes of noun, pronoun, verb, adjective, and adverb. While grammatical words are articles, conjunctions, prepositions, and others, from the angle of structure, a word could belong to any of these types, simple, complex, or compound. A simple word has just one free morphem, such as cat, dog, man. A complex word has both free and bound morphemes, but the morphemes cannot be separated, such as went, men, sought. A compound morphem is made up of at least two free morphemes. There are three ways a compound word can be written. A. Solid. For example, backfire, network, passbook. B. Hypernated, love letter, painkiller, open ended. And C. Open, post office, senior common room, master of ceremony. However, there are no safe rules of thumb that will help in the choice between these three possibilities. 1972. Atmajian 1990, Echoin, Quep and Grimburn 1973 claimed that the conventions of writing compounds in English are simply inconsistent. The item is used when a compound has been newly created or is not widely used when a compound has gained a certain currency or permanency it is often spelt closed up without the hyphen the word blackboard when it was first created was written black hyphen board a spelling found in text from the first part of the century the rule in english for spelling multi-word compounds such as Community Center Finance Committee, is not to write them a single word, but it seems that British English favors the use of hyphen more than it does others. Quick, 1972. A word can be classified based on its function or its structure, group, or phrases. A phrase is a group of related words that has no subject and finite verb. A phrase can go with other forms of other verb, like present participle, going past participle given. A phrase has three parts, namely modifier, head, and the quantifier. Out of the three, two are optional. But one 
is obligatory, and that's the head. The modifier refers to the entities that come before the head, while the qualifier comes after the head are sometimes called posts. Noun phrase. A noun phrase is headed by a noun or pronoun. If a pronoun is the head, there will not be any modifier or qualifier. But if you have a noun as the head, there may be both modifier and qualifier. For example, the tall tree. The tall is the modifier and tree is the head. The cork in your room. The cork is the modifier. In your room is the head and qualifier. The car which is told. The is the modifier. Car is the head which e is the qualifier. Verb phrase. A verb phrase is made up of a lexical verb and its auxiliary. For example, they have gone home. She is reading. Prepositional phrase. A prepositional phrase is a phrase headed by a preposition. It has two obligatory elements, preposition and a nominal phrase. For example, in your own interests, by the road, with God, for our friends. Functions of prepositional phrase. One, it could function as an adjective if it qualifies a noun. Two, it could function as an adverb if it modifies an action that is verb. Three, it could function as a complement of a linking verb. Examples, she is in your car. In your car is a complement. The man under the tree is angry. Is angry is an adverb. He did it for you. For you is an adverb. We will not sing with them. With them is an adverb. Gerundive phrase. Gerundive phrase is a phrase headed by gerund. It is also known as verbial noun. That is the ing form of a verb used as a noun. It functions as an adjective. For example, dancing is good. Fighting is bad. I like playing. The following are gerundive phrases. Example 1. Fighting in class is bad. Fighting in class is a gerundive phrase. I like sleeping during church service. Sleeping during church service is a gerundive phrase. 3. Deceiving people is not good. Deceiving people is a gerundive phrase. Adjectival phrase. This is a phrase added by an adjective. Its modifier is an intensive adverb, such as very, quite, much, so, and so on. Very beautiful. Two beta. Quite ugly. Adverbial phrase. An adverbial phrase has an adverb as its head and another intensive adverb as its modifier very carelessly. For example, she dresses very carefully. 
very carefully is an adverbial phrase. She speaks quite impressively in town. Quite impressively is an adverbial phrase. Infinite vowel phrase. A phrase added by an infinite verb is termed infinite vowel phrase. It functions as a noun, a complement, or an adjective. For example, to be lucky is good. To be lucky is an infinite vowel phrase. To be wealthy does not necessarily mean to be healthy. To be wealthy is an infinite vowel phrase. So, so, to be healthy is an infinite vowel phrase. Three, she is a lady to disgrace. To disgrace is an infinite vowel phrase. Participle phrase. A participle phrase has either a present participle or a past participle form of a verb as its head. It functions only as an adjective. This is why it must be far from the subject it modifies. It functions as a noun. Passive power phrase. A participle phrase has either a present participle or a past participle form of a verb as its head. It functions only as an adjective. This is why it must be far from the su subject it modifies. It functions as a noun. Examples 1. Having gone there twice, we can lead others there. Having gone there twice is a participle phrase there. This can be reconstructed as we. Having gone there twice can lead others there. 2. Dejected by the news, the woman cried uncontrollably. Dejected by the news is a persistent phrase. Perplexed by what he heard, the boy went home sad. Perplexed by what he heard is a persistent phrase. Reprimanded by the lecturer, the student stopped making noise. Reprimanded by the lecturer is a persistent phrase. A positive phrase. This is a noun phrase that is in opposition to another nominal entity. That is, it presents the nominal entity in another form. It is similar to repetition as an a positive phrase can be used in place of the nominal entity in the same construction. For example, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, is slumbering. The giant of Africa is a positive phrase. F. R. Sasa, the rector, is away. The rector is a positive phrase. Lion, the king of the jungle, is dangerous. The king of the jungle is a positive phrase. Henry, the footballer, is hardworking. The footballer is a positive phrase. Sodium chloride, common salt, has many functions. Common salt is a positive phrase. The clause. A clause is a group of related words that has a subject and finite verb. There are two major types of clause. Main clause, also known as alpha, and a subordinate clause, beta. A main clause can stand on its own, while a subordinate clause cannot stand on its own. 1. Unless you are knit, you cannot eat with me. Example 2. The boy cried because his father beat him. We also have different types of 
classification of subordinate class. This is based on the function it performs, deals specifically with subordinate clauses. Noun clause. This is a subordinate clause that functions as a noun as underlined in the example below. What the man did to his wife is wrong. What the man did is a noun clause. Example 2. That we cannot solve this problem is quite unthinkable. That we cannot solve this problem is a noun clause. Whose research work is the best cannot be ascertained. Adjectival or relative clause. An adjectival clause is a subordinate clause that performs the function of an adjective. Examples are underlined below. 1. The driver who killed the dog has been arrested. He has finished reading the book which his mother bought for him. 3. The man whose house was damaged, he's dead. Adverbial clause. An adverbial clause is a subordinate clause that performs the function of an adverb in a sentence. An adverbial clause also have various types. It is based on the question they answer. Examples are adverbial clause of time. It answers the question when. Example 1. I saw him as he was going to church. Example 2. The boy dropped the cup when he saw the big rat. Adverbial clause of reason. It answers the questions why. For example, 1. He came to class because he had no option. 2. He passed because he worked hard. 3. He traveled because he was compelled to do so. Adverbial clause of concession. This is a clause that gives a proposition which is opposite to the one contained in the main clause. For example, 1. Although you are ready, you will not be attended to. Even if you call me, I will not answer you. Adverbial clause of manner. This answers the question, how? For example, 1. He talks as if he knows everything. 2. He behaves as if he were God. Adverbial clause of place. It answers the question, where? For example, 1. We met him where he was sleeping. 2. I saw it where you eat it. Adverbial clause of condition. This answers the question under what condition? For example, 1. Except you are serious, you will be dealt with. 2. Unless you repent of your sins, you will die. The sentence. An int. A sentence is a group of words that begin with a capital and end with a full stop and expresses a complete thought. A sentence is a group of selected words that begins with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. This is a definition from the angle of writing or orthography. From the angle of meaning, a sentence can be defined as a group of related words that expresses a complete thought. Types of sentences. There are two parameters 
for classifying a sentence. These are A. Function and B. Form or structure. Classification based on function. Declarative sentence. This is a sentence which makes a statement of fact. This sentence may either be true or false, and may also be in the negative or positive. 1. We are angry. 2. She is not serious. 3. They are tired. And 4. We love ladies. Imperative sentences. This is a sentence which makes a request or an entreaty. The subject is usually you, but it is often deleted since it is not understood. Examples. Get out. Keep quiet. Leave me alone. Get ready to go. Interrogative sentence. This is a sentence that asks a question. The question could be WH type or polar type. The polar type is also a yes or no question. Examples. WH type. Where is she now? Where do I come in here? How did you get out here? What have you done? Examples of polar type. Are you ready for the exam? Are you ready for the exam? Does he know the right thing? Is he the right person? Will they help us? Can we rely on them? Rhetorical question. This is a question asked only for dramatic or emphatic purposes. Examples. 1. Who does not want to enjoy life? 2. Where else can you find fulfillment except in God? Mild imperatives. This is a command that pretends to be a request and the request also pretends to be a question. 1. Shall we pray? 2. Can you please pass the salt? Classification based on structure or form. Simple sentence. This is made up of only a main clause and no subordinate loss. For example, the man is ready. Don't deceive others. Compact sentence. This sentence is made up of at least two main clauses and one subordinate clause. The clauses may be joined by a coordinating conjunction colon semicolon or comma example watch and pray he read well but he did not pass man proposes while god disposes complex sentence this consists of a main clause and at least a subordinate clause if you can cheat in exams, I will penalize you. Unless you repent, you shall perish. The man had been buried before they arrived. Compound complex sentences. This comprises at least two main clauses and at least one subordinate clause. Examples. 1. Come and see what the Lord has done. 2. Because the father died after a protracted illness and the mother was killed by hand, 
their children were sent to the orphanage. Example 3. Come and eat if you are hungry. Example 4. If you are serious, I will serve and protect you. Exclamatory sentence. This is a sentence which expresses the strong feeling of a person. Example 1. How fortunate are we? What a fortunate man he will be. Structure. Structure accounts for the composition of the unit in terms of functional elements and for the relationship between these elements. May 1985. A group has the structure MHQ, that's modifier, head, and qualifier. M stands for modifier, H for head, and Q for qualifier. Of this, only the head is obligatory. This means that a group must have a head, but it may not have either or both of the M and Q. Example 1. A nice girl. A nice is the modifier and girl is the head. Example 2. The red blouse in your wardrobe. The red is the modifier. Blouse is the head. In your wardrobe is the qualifier. A clause has the structure SPCA, which is S stands for subject, P for predicator, C for complement, and A for adjunct. The subject is associated with the nominal group. The variable group serves as the predicator. The complement is associated with a nominal group, the adjectival group, the adverbial group, and the prepositional group. Examples. Example 1. The ball has red patches. The ball is a subject. Has is a predicator. Red patches is the complement. Example 2. Nobody can go home now. Nobody is the S, which is the subject. Can go is the P, the predicator. Home is C, the complement. And now is A, the adjunct. Three, leave this place. Leave is a predicator. And this place is a complement. You will notice that the elements in a phrase are different from those of a clause, but you can find a clause in a phrase, particularly a relative clause in an our phrase, because there is a concept called embedding or rank shifting, and a clause is essentially made up of at least a phrase. System, an int. System, the range of choices available within a system. System accounts for the range of classes that are available within a unit. This range is called a set of terms. A system has these properties. One, the list of terms contained in its finite. Two, the options are mutually exclusive. This means that if a new term is added, the meaning of at least one of the existing terms is affected more in 1985. The options are mutually exclusive. This means that if a new term is added, 
The meaning of at least one of the existing term is affected May 1985. As you have below, the exclamatory, the declarative, indicative, interrogative. Under the exclamatory, you have the declarative. Under the declarative, you have the tag. Under the declarative as well, you have the indicative, interrogative. Now, under the interrogative, you have polar, that's the yes or no answer. Under interrogative, you have this junctive, either or, and non-polar, W-H. Remember, under the disjunctive, you have subject disjunctive, non-subject disjunctive, and under the non-polar, W-H question, remember, you have subject question, non-subject question. Now, imperative, you have the juicive, non-juicive, and you have exclusive, addressee only, inclusive, speaker, and addressee, and then you have tag. Non-juicive, you have votive and optative. The mood system adopted from Oldston, 1981, C.F. Moley, 1985. Sentence complexity. You have the simple and non-simple. Under the non-simple, you have the complex, you have the compound, and you have the compound complex sentence. You have the clause dependence, which has under it the free and the bound. You have the voice, which under it you have the active and the passive voice. Fitness, you have the finite and non-finite. Person, you have the first, second, and the third under it. Study session summary. In this study session, we examined class and unit. Two of the theoretical categories identified by Ali Day. Our discussion extensively dwelt on three of the grammatical units, which are muffin, word, group or phrase, clause and sentence. You also learned how structure and system operate in English. Each unit has what makes it possible for it to belong to that unit. That is the end of study session three.